Hello, you're listening to Otafu Susume or Recommendations from My Otaku Spouse. I'm Jen. And I'm Wes. So let's get started. So we went to see a movie today. We went to see a movie! And we're here to talk to you about, uh, what was it? Gurren Logan Part 3. Uh, not quite, Wes. Uh, oh, was... sorry. Um, Studio Trigger's Greatest Hits. Uh, almost, but kind of missing the mark. It's on the tip of my tongue. You got it. It's a, it begins with a P. Promare. 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 We went to see Promare. That was it. Yes, we went to see the, not the premiere of Promare. We were actually a few weeks late. Um, so we moved to Japan earlier this year. And one of the great benefits of living in Japan is that we can see Japanese movies when they come out in the theater here. We don't have to wait for the single theater release in the U.S., which is, I believe, Anime Expo in L.A. is going to be the premiere of Premiere in America. Premiere of Premiere. Premiere. Wait, did I say the premiere of Premiere? Yes, you did. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) so we were lucky enough to go see it. And I was actually really surprised that we were lucky enough to see it because we meant to see it when it came out two weeks ago three weeks ago a while back a while back and we didn't actually go see it however they still had showings and when we turned, one showing well they one a day one a day one a day and it was pretty full it almost looked sold out yeah um so it was really nice surprise to see that it was you know selling in japan and clearly i after watching this I can see why, because Wes, Wes, Wes. Uh, yes, dear, you sound like you need help. I need to see this movie again. <laughs> Someone call IXII. <laughs> <laughs> I really need to see this movie again. Oh, my God. It was so good. But we'll, we'll, we're going to be getting onto that in just a sec. A uh, quick disclaimer, this will be a spoiler-free review, so feel free to listen without worrying that we're going to ruin Promare for you. Jen said that I can't say anything, which I think is a bunch of crap. But no, you based can say on... stuff, just don't spoil it for people. Well, saying as I called it Gurren Lagann Part 3, that might be a spoiler. <laughs> Only for people who haven't seen Gurren Lagann. No, for people who have seen Gurren Lagann. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> uh, so you and I have a little bit of history regarding Promare, actually, don't we? Well, you, I, and the other Annie Bros. Well, that's true, I suppose. One Anna Bro in particular. Oh, one Annie Bro in particular. Yeah. Uh, we're, of course, talking about Kenny Loggins here. Um, so Studio Trigger has come two years running to Komori Con now, which has been totally awesome. Come, um, went. We're not in America anymore. That's fine. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. This is the immigrate, emigrate problem again. Anyway, so Studio Trigger went for two years running to KomoriCon, and it was a lot of fun. They had some amazing panels, maybe th- three years running, actually. They were there before that when the guy did the amazing drawing of Gundam Eva Shogoki, but I'm getting off subject. Two years ago, they were there, and they showed off a couple things they did. They had an amazing collab with Pixar f- um, uh, for the opening for uh, Toys of Terror, I believe it was, mm-hmm. for the Toy Story spinoff. But more importantly, they had a big thing showing some of their upcoming projects, including a single still silhouette image from a project they were calling Promare. And the one, the only, Anna Bro Kenny decided to do what no one should ever do. And he stood up to ask a question in Japanese of a Japanese guest and flubbed it. But he could recognize from the sweet pants and the naborimono that the guy was carrying. The flag? Yes, that's what I said. Uh, that the guy was a firefighter. And so the question he asked, he goes, excuse me, is this movie about firefighters? Because Kenny is obsessed with firefighters. Which we didn't actually know before this moment. I didn't know. Wasn't this after we had to buy him a bunch of firefighter porn no, in Japan? this was before we had to buy him the firefighter porn. Okay. Uh, well, whatever gets his fire started. And Kenny flubbed the question in Japanese. The interpreter seemed to flub it slightly when she said it to the guys. Uh, she was just awful. But and that's a whole then when story. the thing came back, they said, oh, no, sorry. 
he's actually he's a festival boy and we're all like what the hell is a festival boy you got to be kidding me and kenny made it his life's mission to prove trigger wrong by finding every reference he could to edo period firefighting clothes and modern japanese firefighting clothes and making a giant like conspiracy theory red yarn image uh collaboration that he stuck on his twitter did yeah literally stuck he pinned it to the top of his twitter yes he did which was great for part two of this story aka when trigger returned one year later so trigger comes back to komori Khan, and we go to their panel again because we enjoy what they do even if sometimes it's a bit of a dead and they get up and they're showing off even more about promare now because they've been to anime expo in july in la and they showed off a trailer for it which revealed that yes it actually was about firefighters which, of course, Kenny took his supreme vindication of his year of anguish of us mocking him with the derision of Festival Boy. And when they came, he kind of raises his hand and does the whole Japanese, hey, remember me? <laughs> so we, uh, we actually tracked down the Trigger guys after their panel. And I tracked down more like stood outside and waited until they came out and then jumped them. Well, okay. Most of us stood there to laugh at Kenny as Kenny mugged them. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. And we're talking to, it was Wakabayashi, I believe. Um, and he's going, remember me? I'm the guy from last year who asked if it was about firefighters. And they went, oh, festival boy. And they immediately went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the best part was when he talks about how he couldn't believe that someone had caught them out so quickly. And he goes back to Japan to talk to Imaishi, the director. And he goes, we've been made. Some weeb in Portland realized about firefighters. What do we do? <laughs> so we've got uh, ultra firefighter weeb Kenny trying to ruin Studio Trigger movies before they come out. And now we've seen the movie before him. True. Which I think is Otafu a win. Susume yeah. Way we yeah. see all the, our fa friends' favorite movies before they get to see them. I absolutely count this as a win. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but it was good. It's uh, about uh, runtime about two hours, which is good because any longer and Kenny would have to see a physician because if it stands for longer than four hours, you probably have some blood flow issues. I was thinking multiple times through that movie, wow, Kenny is going to need a whole box of tissues for this. Oh, man. I mean, so like the opening scene, well, the opening scene, they do a little bit of world building, but then the very next scene, fire rescue squad goes racing through the streets and there's sweet, sweet fire gear. That's not a spoiler. I can say that. Yeah, they're firefighters. What? Spoilers. And the fire truck expands its what would be a ladder on a normal fire truck. And as soon as I saw that going up, I'm like, oh man, spiritually, Kenny's just went up and he doesn't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought exactly the same thing. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Is that enough mocking Kenny or that, are we just going to do more of that No, later? that's like five minutes of mocking Kenny. <sighs> we, should, we should move on. Okay, we can move on. So what were your initial thoughts besides Kenny? My initial thoughts. So if you've seen anything by Imaishi, you're going to feel right at home with this. Um, so if you've seen Gurren Lagan, if you've seen pretty much a lot of things from Trigger, or what stuck out to me mostly, if you've seen Dead Leaves, you're going to feel right at home with Promare. Um, I know you haven't seen Dead Leaves. It's a one-hour OVA movie-ish type thing. But spiritually, I would link Promare closer to that than anything else, just because I think one of the things that felt like they did with Promare was they realized that they either didn't have the time or the budget or the tech to get the CG to where they to being perfect, and so they purposefully made it not perfect stylistically. And I felt that Dead Leaves did a lot of the same. Dead Leaves didn't have the CG level, but just with the animation, um, they did a lot of the same where they chose to make a lot of stylistic choices and a way to hide the fact that they didn't have as much budget. Now, that's not to say that the movie in any way suffers for it because they made that a conscious choice and they did a damn good job with it. Oh, yeah. I mean... Watching it, I could definitely see bits that was like, oh, that's from um, 
panty and stocking. That's from Gurren Nagan. That's from um, Darling in the Franks. That's from uh, Kill a Kill. Like so many little tiny details that you can tell they've taken all those skills from all the other other projects they've worked on and implemented it into this movie and it works so well oh absolutely but there are some things where it's just um there is a robot that shows up in the movie that you're going that's just a girl in Lagan yes. expat <laughs> it really is I it's mean, so good st- straight up it's you i mean if you've watched the trailers so again i'm not counting this as a spoiler you get to see his sweet matoy tech um firefighting robot that he uses a little white one and that's just Lagan doing cosplay for take your dad to work day or take your kid to work day. <laughs> there was actually one thing that my initial thought, so when the movie opens, I, uh, there's a lot of CG and I'm like, oh no, CG, like anime when it does CG, it never does it very well. However, after that initial like, ooh, moment, as soon as everything kicked off, it I was completely blown away. They took the CG and they like owned it. There were so many amazing shots where it was, um, what are they called in cinema? Where it's like a single frame shot panning over a long distance. And then it's like the camera swirls around one of the characters or the two, two characters fighting in motion. And it's just, it's really pretty. I was not expecting it to be that pretty. Oh, it's a very pretty film. Um, they did, also, what I think I first saw in Samurai Jack, but they would do the line art to match the colors that was around it. Yes. And that worked really well, too. I really liked how that looked. Yes. I'm not saying Samurai Jack did it first, but that's what I remember it most in. And I picked it up. You pick it up like in scene one here. It's just, it really just fits everything. It, it's really pretty. It's really pretty. One thing I do have to say, though, is that at first it's, the action is very, very, very fast paced and there is a lot going on on the screen. Mostly, interestingly enough, just shapes. Triangles and rectangles and lots of different shapes and bright color, really bright colors. Oh my goodness, it's like you've taken LSD before going in. But you get really used, you get used to it pretty quickly, I felt. You do. There were a couple of scenes where I would have liked them to slow down slightly to give you more chance to focus on what the characters were saying. Um, there's some exposition that shows up in some of those fight scenes where it never stops moving so so much of your brain just kind of stays focused on trying to figure out what's flashing from side to side that you're also going, oh wait, I should be listening to this. So there were a couple of bits where I'm like, hey, give your char- characters a chance to talk. But... But it was it was a roller coaster. Definitely. Speaking of characters, what did you think of them? I really liked them. Um, I I mean, you can obviously... I was about to say Gynex being Gynex, but it's not Gynex, it's Studio Trigger. <laughs> so Studio Trigger being Studio Trigger, you can really tell like who the bad guys are and who the main characters are. It's very much a, hey, spot the villains type um, gimmick. But Do you have to spot the works. villains when they come onto the screen announcing we're the villains? Well, not exactly. It's more coming on the screen and oh look they've got pointy teeth they're obviously the villains yeah that's kind of what i meant oh right okay (laughs) well okay i'm not gonna say anything else apart from that but um fair enough uh because i don't want to spoil anything but i i thought the female characters were kind of interesting because i mean uh the main girl she doesn't really do much but she also does. And I also, looking at her costume designs, I have to wonder if they designed her because they know that fans are going to be cosplaying as these characters and they want char- like girls to dress in hot pants. And she kind of looks like Misty with pink hair, actually. And massive boobs. I guess in a way, she kind of fits one of those stereotype fireman outfits, too. I mean, she's got the uh, suspender straps and everything. Yeah. But I still, I mean, I was really worried they wouldn't do anything with her. And they didn't for most of the film. But there were a few scenes where she actually did stuff. And she had some great one-liners that made me just chuckle out loud. Which you shouldn't do in a Japanese cinema. But the girl next to me was laughing too, so it's fine. Anyway, yeah, no, I thought the characters were fantastic. I really liked the, um, the, not the pig type character, the mouse. Vinny. 
Vinny, yeah. Yeah, I love the fact that they have the mouse mascot who wears a little fire hat, and his name is Vinny. Oh, uh, I guess one spoiler, the whole movie's set in New York. Well, kind of New York. As if, like, sci-fi New York? It's New York. I mean, they said during the credits afterwards that they had assistance from the Yonkers Fire Department. Oh, really? I, I think I missed that. Oh, no, yeah, it was um, there in the end credits. They One of the people they put in there was Yonkers, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I guess they actually, I don't know if they went there, or if they just talked to them, or if they got pictures or videos or what, but it seems to, they wanted to make sure that this was not a Japanese fire department. That's true. It, it felt very American. And, you know, yeah, just this... I think the early to go back to quickly your, what you're saying about the CG earlier. I was worried every time they were in what was called Primepolis. No, Prompolis, Prompolis, Promepolis, something like that. I have no idea. I don't remember. <laughs> I only ever really see it uh, written, but it's the main city, and it's the one that you see in the trailers with the giant identical skyscrapers everywhere. And when you first see those, it's a little bit of a, ooh, geez. Yeah, but, that was what made me go, ooh, geez. But when you CG. see the rest of the city and you see the stoops and you see uh, just the whole way it's laid out, it's it's New York. Speaking of um, place names or specifically names of people and names of attacks, similar to Kill a Kill, where they have giant red letters across the screen being like, this is what this is. And then the camera pans away, you still see the text in front of the object or the person in the background. <laughs> yeah, or you see it on a camera or something. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. Uh, best boy has got to be Ignis. Everything happened so fast, I actually can't remember the majority of people's names. Oh, Ignis was the leader of the fire crew. He's got the sweet shades, the mustache, and oh, that sweet, sweet muscle car. Really? Okay. I like Ignis. I don't know. I like that type of character. They, they were all very good characters. It, I think one of the things that stuck out to me is the main characters feel like expats from other Triggers shows. <laughs> yeah. But the side yes, characters I know what you mean. are all unique. Well, no, I think some of the side characters as well, like um, the little scientist girl really felt like... Um, oh, my God. Names. I should have written these down. Um, the, Lucia is the scientist girl. Yes, uh, she felt like the pink-haired girl from Kill a Kill. The evil one or the music the, one? The music one. Uh, I suppose. I guess a little bit. I don't know. Well, I guess except she was had eaten way more sugar. Yeah, she also really looks like one of the Trigger Girl mascots. Yes, she does. Which one's Spring or something, I, I think? I forgot they had mascots now. Yeah, she kind of looks like that. But no, I really enjoyed her character, like the fact that uh, her control deck is just a standard arcade set setup yes. with a stick and six buttons. She was fun. I, I mean, all the characters are fun, really. Yeah, they had. A, I mean, you could tell they had a lot of fun making this movie. Definitely. And I, I like how they, I guess, going kind of going onto the story without spoiling anything. They really thought about everything from start to finish and the plot points they wanted to hit. And the character development they wanted to do and the twists, were, everything was clearly planned out from start to finish, which you don't always see in an anime movie. Like sometimes there'll be cases where it's like, oh, and then suddenly at the end this happens and plot twist. And you're like, that came out of nowhere. It feels kind of rushed. Whereas I think the pacing and the way they told the story was was really well done. Okay. No spoilers. So be careful how you react to this. But in counter to what you say, there's a pretty obvious deus ex machina towards the end of the movie. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. It's like you have the whole story going along and they're like, oh, wait a minute. Here's what we can do here. I mean, I guess, but it's trigger. You kind of need that. I suppose. You need that trigger. I suppose. <laughs> Studio triggered. <laughs> so one other thing I wanted to ask you about was what did you think of the movie? Uh, the movie? The, the music. What did you think of the music? The music is nonstop. I don't, I think there's like one scene where everything kind of comes to a head and it goes silent. Yeah. And it stands out because 
the rest of the movie isn't silent. You don't realize that you've been listening to nonstop upbeat music for an entire hour and a half until it goes quiet and your ears are ringing. I, I mean, you kind of do just because the movie, it's a movie that if you get the chance to go see it on the one night it shows in your town or whatever at a Fathom event or something like that in the States, you absolutely should because it benefits massively from an amazing sound system. If you've got one in your house, I mean, that's great. Watch it there, too. But go see it in a theater because when the movie starts and the music kicks in and that's how the sound effects are done, it's it's immersive. You kind of lose yes. yourself in this movie. As Jen was saying, with the, the colors and the flashing and everything, you just get sucked in until it ends almost. And the music is a massive part of that. They did a great job at picking the pieces that fit each scene. You know, whether or not you need this sweet, sweet anime J-pop with the chorus coming in and the vocals and all that, or when they kick over to an instrumental or they've got a piano piece, or which I guess a piano piece is an instrumental, <laughs> but they've got more like techno house instrumentals and piano piece instrumentals and just how it flows from scene to scene and fits scene to scene. Yes. It was really, really well done. It really reminded me again of Kill a Kill where the, you get these really high tension moments in the anime and then that that's the theme kicks in. You know Don't lose your way. <laughs> yes. Or like no, there's it's not quite that one, but it no yeah, yeah, it is that's it the is one. so lose your th your way. And then when that kicks in, you're like punching the air, being like, Yes. It felt like that, but for an hour like two hours <laughs> straight. Yeah, and that <laughs> See, I mean, I. That's kind of another one of the trigger type things. I don't think you either, either you or I finished Darling in the Fox, but um, <laughs> you're gonna have to censor that one. Uh, but I don't. But so I don't really know the music in that one. But you know, even in Gurren Lagann, when you'd start hitting the key points in Gurren Lagann, there'd still be the same that opening guitar riff. Da -na 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 -na, da -na 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 -na, to end before it kicked off with Happily yes. Ever After. Um, and they're, you know, it's kind of a cliche that when the theme song kicks in or whatever, that's when things are getting serious in a show, but it, it works damn well. So yeah, there's a reason they keep using it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Was there anything else that we wanted to talk about without spoiling anything? It's so hard to talk about without spoiling things. I mean, I kind of just want to go see it again. I want to go see it again too. Can we go see it again? Uh, well, we got to go see a couple of other things first. Okay. Well, I think and we're definitely going to have to get it on DVD. Oh. Well, sorry, Blu-ray when it comes out. Yours to own on home video. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. This is one for the bookshelf, um, one for the movie case. It is It is definitely one to own. For sure. Like, if you, if you can go see it, go see it. And Kenny, Kenny, take some tissues with you. You're going to need it. Some... Dude's gonna have like should buy stocks and Kleenex before going. <laughs> and I'd hate to be the usher cleaning up his aisle after that movie. <laughs> well, we should probably start scaring away all our all our all our listeners. I'm just saying those sticky floors ain't from soda. Oh. <laughs> No, but uh, yeah, Promar, Promar, Promar. Was, Promar, Promar, Promar. <laughs> so we went to see Promar. <laughs> uh, no, it was a brilliant the, the, movie. The the Promar of Promar. No, the premiere of Promar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think we're giving it definitely the um, Oda Food two thumbs up. Oh yeah, I I didn't realize that was a thing, but yes. I, I we just made it a thing. Okay, it's a thing. Big recommendation. Huge recommendation. From both of us. Yes. Go see it. Yes. If you get the chance. Fingers crossed it comes to America. Legally. Yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thanks for listening. Hopefully we'll come out with these episodes a little more frequently than we have been. Um, we've been a little busy moving countries and getting a new job and studying for a big exam and just being generally incredibly busy um hopefully i mean if you don't hear from us you'll definitely hear from the annie bros guys so you definitely check them out at anniebroscreative.com along with our other sister shows uh sibling shows kyodai show um uh, 
Fujoshi Trash Talk and Real Japan. And you can also find us on Twitter at Annie Bros Creative. You can, but you're not going to read anything. <laughs> well, that's, that's only because we don't post anything, but still. Don't tell them that. Find us anyway. But no, this is Wesley signing off. And Jen. And go watch Promare. <laughs>